Right, I mean, if somebody takes a drug once a year or twice a year, you're not going to make money on it. So the money is on is uh, providing the service, and the the, the company would have um, a division that would be psychotherapy division, and that would be you know for alcohol and PTSD and all all the all the sort of addictive treatment and so forth and so on, and then a personal growth division, and that would be for religious experiences, creative problem solving, you know, that aspect of things, getting to know oneself part of it. So there'd be two very different kinds of treatment available in, the, in one company structure or in two company structures. And people say, well, you know, the government would never approve of that. Well, you don't need, it doesn't have to be in the United States. There are lots of other countries that would be, you know, I think relatively willing. And as people are accepting psychedelics in a psychotherapeutic sense, that is an opening for for offering these services, and then you have in, to to give psychedelics. You need training, and it's like it's like you need an anesthetist to take anesthetics. You need a, a trained psychotherapist to take to take psychedelics in a therapeutic session. In fact, I find that a good people understand that. And also, it's not a matter of being prescribed the psychedelics and you go home and take it in your backyard. Just as with an anesthetic, you don't do that. Um, so you're you, you're with a a trained professional, and the professionals probably would have slightly different training those who are doing religious training versus psychotherapy. But, yes. but that's the way I think of a way of, of people thinking, oh, maybe there is something to this. Or saying, well, if this is such a good idea, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? This is a way to do it. 